What is up everyone? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com, and today we're going to be starting our new Blade Steel series. Now we've already touched on a brief primer of all different types of blade steels and the different tiers that you will find out there, but today we're going to start our specific Blade Steel series, starting out with one of the most popular on the market today, and that is CPM S35VN. Let's dive right in to where this comes from, how it's made, and what makes it a good blade steel. Now from here on out, I'm going to be referring to this as S35 or S35VN. And as with any patented product, it's only going to come from one company, and that's the company that holds the patent. In this case, it is Crucible Industries. Now Crucible has been making uh, specialized steel uh, for well over 100 years, almost 150 years at this point, uh, since about 1876 in Syracuse, New York. Now the company has morphed over the years and gone through a lot of different transformations, but it is still located in Syracuse and still making specialty tool steels. Uh, they actually have been granted more than a thousand patents uh, throughout the history of steel making and they own more than 70 percent of all patents issued in the entire history of tool steels. What that means is that they really know the process, they really know what they're doing and they make a great product. They really get behind the science of it. Now uh, they have been innovative when it comes to stainless steels, automotive valve steels, titanium alloys, super alloys and even rare earth magnetic materials. Now, Crucible was actually the first company to commercially produce vacuum arc remelted steels. They were the first to, ve to develop powder metallurgy. And of course, they produced the patented CPM or Crucible particle metallurgy that we're going to be talking about today. Now, let's dive right in to how they make this S35VN steel. Now, the premier products uh, from Crucible are going to be from their CPM or crucible particle metallurgy process. Um, now the CPM process involves gas atomization of pre-alloyed molten steel to form powder. Now this powder is then consolidated through the HIP process which is hot isostatic pressing to produce a hundred percent dense compact product. Now the HIP process uh, it, it subjects a component to both elevated temperature and isostatic gas pressures. Essentially what happens is they take the powder and they press it while heating it up to somewhere around up to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, sometimes as high as 2400 degrees Fahrenheit, while compressing it with isostatic pressure. Um, usually something like argon gas, some sort of inert gas is used uh, and it's going to be anywhere from 15,000 to 45,000 PSI depending on uh, what powdered metallurgy process you're going to be using. Now uh, these CPM steels uh, as a result of this process are going to offer improved wear resistance, toughness, and grindabil grindability uh, with incredible corrosion resistance uh, based on the materials that are used. Now let's dive right in to what materials are used and what composes this CPM S35VN steel. Now Crucible Industries set out in 2009 with their S35VN steel to create something to be better than their S30V line of steels and they definitely did that. They did this by substituting niobium for some of the vanadium that they used in the process and in doing so they created something that was just a little bit harder uh, just a little bit more tough and had better edge retention but was also still able to be sharpened and uh, didn't chip as easily. They did a fantastic job with this. Now let's look at what makes up this steel. You're going to find 79.1% iron in this steel. You're going to find 1.4% carbon. That's going to help with the hardness. You're going to find 14% chromium. That's what is going to make it a stainless steel. As long as it's above 13%, it's going to be good to go as far as stainless steel goes. You're going to find 3% vanadium in this, 2% uh, molybdenum, and 0.5% niobium. Now the Rockwell hardness for S35VN, and I've got a couple of examples here, my SE Zancudo, as well as my Kaiser 
that glider here. Um, both S35VN blades, I absolutely love these blades. The Rockwell hardness on these is going to be anywhere from 58 to 61 Rockwell hardness. And that's going to depend on the heat treatment after that steel is made. With all of that toughness, hardness, and corrosion resistance, it is a little bit more expensive than your more common blade steels. But it is definitely worth it. So in conclusion, folks, blade steel is very subjective. Everyone's got an opinion. I will say that knowing what I know and having my experience, and I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been working with steel for a very long time. S35VN is a great steel. Honestly, it's one of my favorites as an all-around blade steel. Um, I love it. It does come with a price. It's a little bit more expensive than your common blade steels, but that's because you're gonna get great performance great edge retention, great durability, great hardness, and you're gonna find it in all different kinds of knives. Essie Zancudo, fixed blade, survival knife, a great, beautiful EDC right here in my Kaiser bag lighter. Uh, a phenomenal all-around steel with great performance. But what I wanna know is, do you like it? What do you think about S35VN? Uh, have you got some knives with that type of blade steel? Show us some pictures. Tag us in those. We want to see those. And we're going to be continuing this series and going more in depth on specific blade steel. So let us know what you want to see next. We're going to be doing uh, these ever so often. And we want to see what you want to hear about and what you want to know the history of. Let us know in the comments down below. If you've liked this video, smash that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that notification bell so you will know when we drop new videos and talk about different blade steels. And remember folks, if it cuts, we carry it.